Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the radar vectors. By the end of the video you will know what is a radar vector, why the air traffic controllers use a radar vectors and how do we use them during everyday operations. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot. So if you don't want to miss the next content, please consider subscribing to the channel and go to PilotClimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. Alright, the topic of today is the radar vector. First of all, what is a radar vector? The radar vector is an instruction sent from the air traffic controller to the pilot to follow specific heading. In order to understand in fully what the radar vector is and why it is important, we need to first of all understand that every commercial aircraft has got a flight plan. In the flight plan you have a specific route that you have to follow in order to fly from the airport A to the airport B. Okay? You need to fill up all the points that you want to follow. Okay? This is your standard route. So if there is, imagine there is there, if there will be no controller, in that case is the pilot, in this case you, you need to follow the standard route, okay, go from your airport to the specific point, to another specific point, to another specific point, and so on, until you reach your destination. The air traffic controller, they utilize radar vectors for many reasons. The best reason for, our, for, for you as a pilot and for me as a commercial pilot is when they give us radar vectors to shorten your route, okay, let's say your route has got a 90 degrees angle and the air traffic controller gives you radar vectors and makes your route a lot shorter. Shorter, okay, this is one of the reasons why the air traffic controller sends radar vectors to instruct pilots to fly specific headings. So that's the best. The air traffic controller utilizes radar vectors as well for positions report. Okay, there may be some very rare cases where the transponder doesn't work properly. Thus, the air traffic controller can actually ask you to report your present heading in order for them to identify your positions in the radar. Okay, let's say the transponder doesn't work very well and they cannot read your heading. So if you report them your heading, they will be able to position your aircraft into the radar. Another way that the air traffic controller uses the radar vector is to ask you to continue present heading, to instruct you to continue present heading. This technique is called and is known as a locking your heading. This is utilized when, for example, you're, you're continuing cruise and then suddenly you hear your controller is calling you and saying something like that. Pilot climb 001, this is Madrid radar, for example continuum present heading. Okay? Happens to me many times that I, I was flying on a straight line from north to the south in a, in a south flight for example, there was no time to make all the way down to my destination but suddenly the controller calls you and tells you to continue present heading. What does it mean? He's locking your heading because if there is another aircraft that is getting close to you, by locking your heading and locking the other uh, the heading of the other aircraft, okay, they will make sure that those aircraft they don't make any unexpected turn that does compromise the minimum separation. Okay, this is called locking your heading. Okay, because since both aircraft are continuing on a present heading under the instruction of the ATC of the air traffic controllers, they, they will stay on the present heading. They might drift if there is wind because the wind might push them. But they, since they are flying on the present heading, they will get they will get the same drift. Okay, so they will stay separated all the times. Okay, as you can see, the radar vectors are not only utilized to shorten the route of the pilot. The radar most of the time are utilized for flow management. Whenever there is a lot of traffic, they have to, they have to manage this traffic and thus they start to give vectors to the people. This is very common when you land in a place, when you approach an airport with a busy airspace such as Madrid, London and so on. Okay, Because there are lots of aircraft trying to land at the same time and since not all of the aircraft can land at the same time, they start to give radar vectors to everybody and they are called delay vectors. Okay, They basically, instead of allowing you to fly the standard arrival all the way down to the landing, they will ask you to turn right, they ask you to turn left and so on in order to make up time, okay? Because if there are so many, if there are too many aircraft arriving at the same times, we cannot land all together. So somebody has to wait and they give us these delay vectors, okay? Once the radar vector is completed, okay, once the instruction from the air traffic controller you received is not required by the air traffic controller anymore, it will inform you to resume on navigation. So what does it mean is that you can fly direct to the point. Normally the air traffic controller will tell you something like that. Pilot climb 001, this is Madrid control, resume on navigation direct to point Laplo, for example. Okay, so they tell you resume your navigation and fly direct to a point. Okay, from that point you join again your standard route until the next vector if you receive one. 
okay? The radar vector instruction must be very clear from the air traffic control because it can be misunderstood by the pilots, okay? Because let's say I tell you turn right heading 0, 9, 0, okay? And then I tell you descend flight level 0, 9, 0. So as you can see, these two numbers can be the same. And that's why on the radar vectors, the air traffic controller has to provide the pilot with three digits, no matter what, even if the heading is 0, 2, 0, okay? You can say turn right heading 2, 0, doesn't work like that. They have always to give us three digits. So it's going to be uh, pilot climb 001, Madrid control, turn right heading 030, for example. And why we always need to have these three digits? Because it can be misunderstood by a flight level, okay? So let's say the air traffic controller will tell you turn right 090, it can be misunderstood with this same flight level 090, for example, okay? And this is why on the radar vectors, they always have to give us three digits. However, on the flight level, if you have only two digits, they will give you the instruction with that digits, okay? So in case, in order to make an example, could be pilot climb 001, this radar control, Turn right, heading 0, 9, 0, the same flight level, 9, 0. So as you can see, we've got two digits for the flight level and three digits for the heading because all of this is a procedure in order to try to minimize that threat of um, misunderstanding, okay? In order to minimize the misunderstanding between the pilots and the controller. Upon receiving a radar vector, it's extremely important that you actually read back the instruction that you, actually, you just received from the air traffic controller, okay? A classic example will be Madrid control is calling you, okay, the, your aircraft, your company's pilot climb, for example, so it will be something like that. Pilot climb 001, this is Madrid control, turn right, 18090, okay? The pilot needs to read back saying, Madrid radar, pilot climb 001, turn right, 090, okay? You need to read back your radar vector instruction, okay? And it has to be precise because when you're flying into busy airspace, you're gonna have a lot of traffic around you, so you want to be correct. And if you understood the wrong radar other vector, okay, the wrong instruction, you read back the wrong instruction, that's fine because the air traffic controller will correct you with the correct one, okay? It is very important to actually read back and listen if there is any correction from the air traffic controller. You can receive radar vectors as well whenever you're descending, okay? Whenever you're approaching your airport, sometimes you receive radar vectors to get established on final in order to land, okay? And sometimes when you're flying on the IMC, the IMC is Instrumental Meteorological Conditions, means that you maybe you cannot see outside, you're not able to see outside because you've got some clouds, okay? And that specific scenario when you receive your radar vector, you are trusting the air traffic controllers, okay? Because they can actually give you radar vectors below the MSA. If you don't know what the MSA is, I made a separate video and I strongly recommend to watch that, okay? So let's say you are following your standard arrival, you are below the MSA, but since you're on standard arrival, you are fine with the terrain clearance, and the air traffic controllers give you a radar vector that actually make you fly off of your standard arrival, okay? This will make you fly in an area below the MSA that is not on the stand rival. And that's fine because the air traffic controller has got the terrain situation in front of him and the terrain situation under control. However, never trust blindly the air traffic controller radar vectors because they can make mistakes since they are human like we are as a pilot, like you are, okay? So you follow the radar vector instruction, of course, but you're still monitoring your terrain clearance. And if you're not sure about your radar vector, okay, you think you're getting too close to the terrain, challenge the air traffic controller, okay? Ask clarification and confirming the heading of the radar vector, for example, okay? Okay? And if you, uh, the typical example is you fly on the standard arrival, you get off of the route because you receive a radar vector, and then suddenly you cannot talk to the controllers anymore or you lose uh, the communication. In that case, what would you do? You have to climb straight to the MSA, no question asked. Once you are above MSA, especially if you are EMC, you take, uh, you, you think about what happened, okay? Because it is paramount to understand that even though the air traffic controller has got the radar situation, the, the terrain situation in front of him, and he, he has the terrain situation under control and knows exactly where the aircraft is positioned compared to the terrain, you always need to cross-check his job, okay? You always need to cross-check that the radar vector doesn't make you fly too close to the terrain because 
the aviation is a crossing check job. Okay, I'm crossing check what the pilot monitor or the pilot flying is doing and vice versa and the air traffic controller as well. So as you can see, you have to trust, but no, never sleep, okay, never fly bl blindly because somebody said so, okay, always take your terrain into consideration. After flying for more than 10 years around Europe with the Boeing 737, I can tell you that the best air traffic controllers that I found, for, in my opinion, are the, the air traffic controller of the London area, okay? The London area air traffic controller are very accurate with the radar vectors. They actually vector you all the way down to the final and they actually leave you all, all established on the ILSs because 90% of the time we got vectors from the air traffic controller to shorten our route when on the la last phase of the flight, okay? And when they are actually giving us radar vectors, they are, the air traffic controllers are even monitoring your altitude. So they are trying to make you establish on the LS on the right position and the right altitude, okay? But I can tell you that sometimes the air traffic controller are not very accurate and sometimes they let you, they, they give vectors you, you are slightly above the LS or slightly below the LS, the glide slope in this case, okay? And that's your job to change your uh, vertical profile and make sure you actually get established on the LS, okay? But I can tell you from my opinion, in my opinion, the best air traffic controller that I found were from uh, the London area, okay? Or London area. What happened in there is that they really vectored you and you are straight perfectly on profile once you are established inbound. Many other area of air traffic controller, they do a great job, okay? But if we, I can actually tell you w which ones are the best, in my opinion, are the London area air traffic controller. I hope you like the video about radar vectors and now I hope you understand what radar vectors are and now do we use it during everyday operations. If you like the video give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also go to pilotclient.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.